a great show with some pretty big predictions that we are diving into because the 2024-2025 Barclays Women's Super League season kicks off on Friday tomorrow and last year's title race in the league was one of the closest in recent memory and this year might be even closer. So before it even starts, we're going to give our season predictions because who doesn't love a season prediction being right and being wrong. Let's start with the the biggest one, the champion. Who is going to win the Women's Super League Championship? Now Chelsea are five-time consecutive winners, but Christine who wins it this year? Listen, this shirt was not intentional, but I think I think it's going to be Man City. It was way too close last season. They literally lost the league on goal differential the last day. I think that they have now gotten so close, both at least three seasons of the last five, finishing as runners up, and their last league win being 2016 they are fed up that and i'm a little bit tormented by the fact that viv mietema wsl all-time leading goal scorer and bunny shaw last year's golden boot winner are teammates and viv's already come out and made her debut goal in women's champions league so man city are come out like just hammering already they're scary yeah i have to second it yeah third it go go out there yeah yeah, we're three for three with Man City. I think they are going to have vengeance from last year. Bunny Shaw is going to want those last couple games back. Um, I think with Nidama, that combination is freaking scary. I don't know. We already said this about City. How do you stop their entire attack? Now you've added Nidama. It's mm-hmm. it's almost going to be impossible to not let them score on you. You're going to have to try to outscore them, which I don't think many teams can do, especially in the WSL. So I've got them because they've also had more of a solid team. They've had more acquisitions than transfers away, whereas other teams have lost a lot of players, had new coaches come in. It's going to be even more of an adjustment. Looking at you, Chelsea. Sorry, Courtney. But I do think City's got this in the bag. They also have the best defense in the league. They only conceded 15 goals last season. I just, I'm upset. Like, I'm excited because I'm like, let's go WSL season, but I'm I'm upset. Prematurely upset. Yeah. So we did not talk about our picks before this. You guys are all Man City. I also picked Man City. Oh, no. We're about to put the jinx on them. Oh, no. All of them. I I was going to say it pained me to choose them because it's like, I want to sit here and be like Chelsea all the way. But... There's just something about Man City coming, how they end last season, going into this season. We talked endlessly about their attack. I think it's also like the Miramas presence, I think is also just going to maybe alleviate any concept of pressure that may have been there for Bunny Shaw to have Mm -hmm. to go off and come back from injury and maybe have some of that expectation played upon her. It's it's they're going to have a good season and I think it's going to be good enough to to win the league. David's with us worried. live on YouTube, and he's like, tisk, 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 wash your mouth out. <laughs> oh, at it again. David, I love David, it. David, <laughs> I want you to be correct. I'm over here. I'm oh, over yeah. here, like, making my pick without, you know, without my heart in it. I'm over here to, you know, we want, we like to be right. We're competitive out here, too. But, I mean, look, if Chelsea takes it all, I ain't going to be mad. <laughs> my uh, legit worry isn't that, you know, Bunny is having this pressure alleviated. It's that they're going to compete with each other. It's going to get insane. Um, I I honestly, I'm starting to think that like Viv, now that she's healthy, could come up golden boot this season oh. just because she's a very competitive, smart, tactile, versatile player. And I think that being at Man City and knowing that, you know, she is this Arsenal player, she's coming out to make a statement. Okay, we'll get to that. We'll get to our golden boots because we're doing all of it. So we all have City right. winning as the champion. Um, that's crazy. We'll, we'll have to circle back on this in a couple months. But if we all have City winning, that means they are going to be our first place. But let's round out the top three for them. So if City wins, Darian, who are your number two and your number three who finish the season? I don't think it's going to be a surprise. Chelsea, number two. Arsenal, number three. Uh, both. Say I. <laughs> I. Unless someone has different. Arsenal second, Chelsea third. Oh, okay, yeah. but those those top three, I do think. Oh, yeah, I think that's the definitive three. I think if anybody's going to try to squeak in, it may be Liverpool because last season they did have a way of inching up the table, but I don't really see. I just, in my soul, I don't feel United are going to be threatening this season. That's fair. 
I mean, I don't, I mean, look, this is going to be, I think a, a repeat perhaps of what we saw last year. There's going to be some flux, like fluctuating moments. There's going to be some stretches where perhaps like what we saw last season, you can't predict tragic things like injuries and things like that. Um, and we can't even really maybe predict those teams who are going to maybe upset some of these other teams that we're looking to get top three or top four. You mentioned Liverpool, Kupo. I'm, I'm with you on that. Will we see Spurs go ahead and maybe be one of those teams to kind of go up tough and like deliver kind of one of those upset results. And those are the really the make or break moments. Like we don't, I, I think the stat is that we've never seen a team uh, lose more than three games in women's super league and then go on to win the league. Mm -hmm. So it's like, who, who is going to be that team to kind of really shake things up? So Darian, you mentioned that city Chelsea Arsenal, I have the same one. Does it come down to goal differential? Comes down to goal differential for sure. Whoa. I think all of these teams are solid. Uh, city's going to outscore everybody. We already talked about their star power up top. Chelsea also has a ton of star power. You have players coming back from injury that are going to add to them, but is it going to be a little bit too late? We've seen that be the crux of the issue going late into the season. And then for me, Arsenal, they have such a good freaking team. It's just never consistent enough. It's never consistent enough. They drop points against teams that they should be beating. They can see goals that shouldn't happen. Changing styles against tactically against some teams that I don't think makes a lot of sense. This was last year. Maybe they'll prove me wrong, but we'll see. Uh, but that's that's my setup. What about you, Lisa? Did you have the same? I have same the thoughts? same. But I don't same think it'll come down to goal differential because of uh, Miedema and Shaw at City, and frankly, because of the defense that City still has. Uh, right, they were the best defense in the league last season. Only 15 goals against in 22 matches, and they still have Alex Greenwood. They still have Lily Alexandri. Uh, the defense hasn't changed at City. If anything, it's gotten stronger because it's the ball's going to stay at the front of the field with. Viv Miedema and Bunny Shaw. So to me, it's going to be City, but not by a landslide. It's going to come down to the final few weeks, but they're going to win it outright at the end of it because goal differential isn't even going to be close between these two teams. Um, and then I have City and Arsenal. Or I'm sorry, so City, Chelsea, Arsenal. But there are teams that are going to disrupt that, that are going to try to break into that top three, that are going to throw – these top three teams off the scent at the end of the season in their title hunt. So surprise of the season, Sandra, whether it's a good surprise or a bad surprise, which team is going to be the surprise of the season? All right. So we're talking about maybe I was mentioning teams that could kind of be kind of mid table teams who will be competitive enough to maybe kind of present an upset to this big three that we're talking about. And I think for a lot of us, maybe that was Liverpool last year, but I'm going to maybe go for the new kids on the block. I'm looking at Crystal Palace to maybe, just oh. maybe be the ones to do something crazy. I, listen, listen oh, I, had to, I had to shake it up here. We're saying too many things where we're agreeing with each other. And I said, this is going to be the moment where one of us is going to have to have some wild takes. So I think Crystal Palace might have approximately one game <laughs> where they will deliver some sort of upset in any capacity, whether it's an actual handing someone a loss, handing someone a draw, they're going to deliver. How much responsibility will it be of Katie Stengel? on crystal palace to do that upsetting it's gonna be it's gonna be tough but i think she'll be up to the challenge <laughs> <laughs> i i couldn't disagree more as we'll see later in the show with uh, <laughs> regards to crystal palace but i know it's crystal palace lander i just think it's difficult coming into the league it is coming into wsl you lost your leading goal scorer uh I'll, I'll get more into that later but yeah i disagree i do think man united is the sleeper team um I think that they have Valentol's Joyce playing out of the back. I mean, a lot of United's mistakes last year were issues playing out of the back, lack of confidence, lack of movement from the center backs. They picked up Jansen, um, Netherlands International, who is great, really effective, also great on set pieces, is going to bring some confidence. And then I think Samia Wujo is a mm -hmm. player that's going to get a lot of minutes. I think she adds a lot to their attack. She's powerful super young player going to want to develop. And I feel like when you're that young and you go into a team like United, who she said she grew up as a United fan, you kind of 
go in with the audacity to just try things. You don't really care. You've signed with the team. You want to make a statement. I think she's going to help them a lot. And then getting Miyazawa on the ball, getting the best out of Miyazawa, I think is going to be really effective. So I think United's my sleeper team that may screw up my prediction of the top three um, that I made earlier, but we'll see. I, I have some faith. That's music to United fans' ears, hands down. Christine, what about you? Sleeper team, surprise team of the season, Sleeper whether it's good team. or bad? No, I think that, I mean, granted, I'm not trying to say that they're going to crack into like top four, top five, but I think that they will fare a lot better. Aston Villa. I think that they have consistently season over season tried to bring in reinforcements and this season they'll also have matches at Villa Park. I think that's going to give them a bit of a bump, um, just more exposure. But I think their personnel is starting to come together a little bit. I know they lost a couple of key players, but I think they're turning a page. They're realizing mm -hmm. like game face on, let's go. My sleeper team, a uh, surprise team is Liverpool. They, they, with under Matt Beard, right, they were able to break into the top four last season. They had really good moments of upset. And with a new young acquisition in Olivia Smith, the Canadian international to join this group, I think she could be the spark that Liverpool need just to cause some upsets. I'm more on the lines of Sandra right here in terms of like, throw other teams off points, take points away from them, disrupt them on goal differential, right? Be really solid defensively, especially down the stretch of the season and just create chaos in the Super League, especially in the top four, top five at the end of the year. Um, I'm going with Liverpool. I want them to just go a little crazy. Now we talked about the top half of the table. Let's look at the bottom half of the table. Predictions for the end of the season a team that's going to get relegated. Um, Darian, I think I know where you're going. Oh, this oh, that's common. Why do you know that? Oh, yeah. um, Sandra, sorry. I don't I'm... think Crystal Palace are going to make it far. <laughs> I'm so sorry. They're losing at least two. Unfortunately, she tore ACL. She's out for this year. She's their leading goal scorer and honestly the brightest spark, uh, spark in their attack. Yes, they brought in the likes of a Katie Stengel, who I have faith in. But I don't know if she's in a position where she can really turn this team around to be that effective against the big dogs in the WSL. And when you have so many acquisitions, you have a team coming up into a new league, that competition level is, takes a long time to adjust. Uh, I don't know if they have it in them just yet. West Ham is also another team I'm, I'm still not feeling great about. I think it's going to be a little bit more of a battle between those two teams on – the bottom of the table, like the literal bottom of the table. But for me, Crystal Palace, it's going to be a really difficult year. Cool. I like that yeah. shout. All right, Christine, what about you? Who's? Yeah, I mean, out? I had the same thing. My expectation is they're going to be a yo-yo team, elevator up, elevator down. The only other team really in my mind that I think could end up getting relegated, honestly, is West Ham. They just have not been very good. They were not good last season. Um, yeah. Tough yeah, stuff. that's a tough one. Sandra, tough what stuff. about you? No love for Crystal Palace. Listen, and <laughs> rightfully so. You get a lot of love. This is, this is the pattern. <laughs> <laughs> look, look. Surprise team top. Even, even, top Bristol, top. even <laughs> Bristol got approximately one win last season. Okay, and that's, <laughs> and that's the energy I was going with. Not that they were going to like do some massive run of the table. Let's be real here. Come on, y'all. No, I think they will have <laughs> at least Palace one good Pope, yeah, right. Crystal, Sandra Herrera thinks yeah, Crystal Palace wrong. are winning all the WSL like, championship. Yeah, I'll be like, whoa. Yeah, I know. That's absolutely what's going to get clipped now and mis misinformation is going to start spreading rampant. I love it here. Um, no, I think, look, even last year, Bristol got at least one win, and I think that's the energy I was going with with Crystal Pennants. Maybe they'll get that one result where it could kind of shake things up or change the trajectory of one of the other uh, upper half table teams. But just echoing Darian's sentiments already. That's, that's the recipe, right? Like you, you get, you get promoted and unfortunately maybe you see a bit of a, a struggle and then you get relegated again. We saw that happen with Bristol last season. We've seen it happen before in other campaigns and I won't be shocked if it happens again in this one with Crystal Palace, but that's not to say just because that's maybe the safe or maybe easy pick that, Kubo, I also agree with that maybe West Ham could be flirting a little bit with regulations here. I mean, Leicester City, can we really yeah. maybe kind of throw them in the mix as well? Yeah. So, I mean, 
just like the top three, I think maybe the bottom three, you got to take a look at and see what we're going to be going with there as well. Sandra, you stole the words right out of my mouth. As Although I don't think Crystal Palace is going to run the table, I think that Leicester has a bit of a bigger uphill climb to face, right? Crystal Palace has the, the naivety of knowing nothing about the Super League and just going to say, hey, let's go in there, let's play our game, right? It can give a team a little bit of sauce, but for Leicester, they've struggled, right? The changing in their coaching staff this offseason, they really haven't made too many acquisitions to bulk up their roster, and they've struggled. They've been consistently average finishing 10th in the last several years. It, it's just not looking good for them. Um, I'm nervous about where Leicester could go at the end of this season, potentially back down to the championship. Individual players in the Women's Super League get to win a lot of awards. So let's take a look at them specifically. We're going to start with Golden Boot. Christine, you alluded to this earlier in the show, so I'll let you take it away. Who wins the Golden Boot this year for you? Oh, yeah, alluded. No, I flat out said, no, I think Viv Miedema is going to come for a golden boot this year. I think she has a massive statement that she's prepared to make, having departed Arsenal after being the quintessential Arsenal player um, under no uncertain terms. And I think that having the competition, the friendly competition, and just knowing that she's got a quality uh, goal scorer beside her in Bunny Shaw, she's going to be extra motivated to just run it up. And again, she's already scored her debut goal for City in this uh, Women's Champions League match. So I think that that's just a little glimmer of what's to come in this season. Minima only scored because Bunny Shaw wasn't available. We'll get to that. But uh, mm -hmm. Bunny Shaw is my golden boot. She's going to go back to back with the City side. Having Minima there is going to push Shaw to be better, score more goals, be more lethal. And she's going to stay healthy the whole season, which gives her an extra eight games to continue scoring more. I'm going to go Bunny Shaw, but also. Hold up. City. You think that Viv only scored because Bunny wasn't there? You think <laughs> yeah. that Viv just scores goals, creates goals, makes goals, digs goals out of thin air? Mm -hmm. well, this Incredible. is going to be a season. Incredible. <laughs> Breaking news, Lisa Carlin says. <laughs> when he was taking yeah, a nap, so Viv said, I'll step up today, I guess. Oh, goodness. I'm with Lisa. Shocker. Uh, I'm here for Queen Bunny making the run again. And hopefully lessons were learned over this last weekend. And Man City will ensure that all of the paperwork is where it needs to be so that they are never without Bunny Shaw throughout the remainder of their campaign. Any game, any tournament, whatever it is, but I'm 100% here uh, to see the return of, of Bunny Shaw. I think it came down to goal differential last year. Maybe they thought they had enough of a cushion to where they could have saw out the remainder of that season. You saw in the body language of that team when it came down to the final week how it, it was a title that slipped away from them. And Bunny Shaw not being there was absolutely a key factor. So hopefully she returns. And with Lisa, we will manifest good things and make sure that she stays healthy throughout this season and racks up another golden boot. We need Darian's crystals to make sure she stays healthy. Too. They're right here. They're right <laughs> next to me. I'm looking at them now. Oh, I also want to say my girl Bun Bun, but I want to be different. I'll say Alessia Russo. Um, sleeper, I think that she can really be effective. I th actually think this last year, we've seen her really find her groove as that solid nine. Her hold up play has been incredible. Also with the Lionesses, she's been fantastic scoring goals, really tricky goals as well, putting her body on the line. Um, her finishing has gotten so much better. She just looks confident in herself. And I think this could be the year for her to maybe outscore everybody. I, I don't really know if she will, but I do think that she will score more goals than she did last year and be really effective on and off the ball. Good shout for Alessia Russo. Player of the season, Sandra, who's the player of the season? Uh, all right. I'm going to go a little bit. Uh, I want to go a little bit out on a limb here as well, because I really liked this signing, but it all depends on how she's utilized and how much time uh, she gets with the team. But I really liked the signing for Arsenal of Rosa Kofaji from uh, Hacken and I just fingers crossed I want to 
hope and believe that she will have this type of breakout season, that there won't be a gap from going from le- from one league to another league, that she will just hit the ground running and go, go, go. I think she could be a really key piece for this team that's kind of trying to find their way back in into the mix of, of kind of running the league. So hopefully it's going to be her. Christine? I'm going to go Hasegawa, first city. I think she's just such an important piece of that midfield and just the connector between that back line and just creation into the attack, just a string puller quintessentially. I think that she's she got, she's sort of an unsung hero, although she does get, I think, pockets of hype. Um, but I, I think that she'll stand out again this year. Darian? I am going to go with Fran Kirby for Brighton. I don't think we got to see as much of her last year with Chelsea. This is a player who has been formidable in her career. Yes, she's a little bit older, and I think that's why she was getting on the more of the bubble with Chelsea. They're obviously wanting to go into a different direction and shape the team into what the youth look like. I still think she's one of the best players in the world by far. So going to a team where she's going to have that time, she's going to have the ability to lead in the midfield, up top, take set pieces, look effective. I, for me, she might be player of the season. Yeah, it's going to be like really disorienting yeah. seeing her not in a Chelsea shirt for probably half of the season. I think it just is like a weird brain glitch that I'm going to have. Yeah, this weekend's going to be interesting seeing all the new players. Um, my player of the season is going to be Lauren Hemp. When you think of her production last year as a forward with Manchester City, she had 11 goals, eight assists. I don't think goal scoring wise, she's going to be as productive this season just behind Viv Miedema and Bunny Shaw. However, she's going to be able to set them up so much for success and contribute in different ways in the attack, become more of a playmaker and an orchestrator on the pitch that creates chances and goal scoring moments for city. Um, so I'm going to go with Lauren hemp as my player of the season in this off season. A lot of transfers came into the league that we now get to see new players contribute for the best transfer. Darian, who is, who are you keeping an eye on in the league? Olivia Smith to Liverpool. Uh, I think this is a really young player. Again, I'm with the youth. I'm, I want to be Gen Z. I think they're coming in with some boldness, some confidence. Uh, Matt Beard, is that's something that that team needed last year, somebody to just try something, somebody that can run at back lines that isn't, I think, caught up in how the team is playing, but plays with a little bit more freedom. And for me, a younger player is just going to do that. And she's proven that with Canada. So for me, she's a player that I think is a really, really good transfer for Liverpool because they need some bulk up top. Yeah, that's a good transfer. I like the youth, too, of of Olivia Smith. Um, I'm going to go Lucy Bronze from Barcelona to Chelsea. Ah, that's a good one. She's absolutely going to destroy this league. She's going to have so much fun with it, be able to like play with a lot more freedom, um, have a a little bit more of her freedom and creative spark on the ball because she's not just going to be going up against low blocks every single time. She's going to be a huge asset to Chelsea and Sonia Bonpastor. I'm going Lucy Bronze, Christine. Dang, I keep forgetting how yoked Chelsea is. (gasps) I know. <laughs> I know. It's okay. Eddie Beaver Jones. Yeah, it's it's pretty wild over there. It's crazy how similarly we think because I totally had Olivia Smith in my back pocket too. But my pick is actually Mariona Caldente. So I think that that's a massive pickup for Arsenal. Obviously, two times Champions League winner, World Cup winner, brings a lot of just finesse um, to that midfield. I think that she's just a great asset to have. I think that'll be like a reinvigoration point. Um, I think, yeah, big time. Let's go. For me, I'm I'm going to give a little bit of love to, to Man United. Hate to do it, but when they signed Elizabeth Turlin from Brighton, I thought great pickup someone who could maybe kind of shake things up in the attack for this team moving forward because this was a team that I think got a little stagnant stagnant at a certain point in last season and they couldn't really find an answer and to get something in the back of the net and part of why I think maybe we were high on Brighton going into this season was because of a player like her but guess what Turlin's not there anymore she's with Man United so I'm going with Turlin and Man United We have a lot of youth across the Super League this season, Christine. So best young player, your prediction for this year? Uh, Rosa Kafaji. I think we saw what she was capable of with Hacken. 
Arsenal sliding in and picking her up. She's only 21 years old, has a lot of poise. She's really composed. She's shown that she melds well with that team already. I think that this is going to be a breakout season for her. Double down. Double down. I like that shout. Uh, I'm going Simia Wujo. For me, this is a a great pickup for United. Am I a United fan suddenly? (laughs) Don't. Please, no, I love you too much. What the hell is going on? Uh, but for me, she's powerful. She's strong. She's 5'9". She's going to be a great target on set pieces. Uh, for me, I see her getting a lot of minutes with United. Um, she's going to be best player of the year, young player of the year for me. Yeah, just doubling down on Kufaji. I, I just think that this player has an opportunity to do something special in uh, one of the biggest leagues in the world and with one of the most iconic brands in the globe so hopefully continues to get some minutes and they utilize her and we'll get to see something special i'm going olivia smith the canadian international 20 year old with liverpool um because she's going to get a lot of minutes i think she's going to be able to contribute a lot be help liverpool be that sleeper team that disrupts and and takes points off other teams in competition i had an honorable mention though with fujino the Japanese international Mm, 20 year old. Mm -hmm. She comes in from Japan to Manchester city where she was league MVP for the previous two years in Japan. However, I'm not sure how much of an impact immediately she's going to have at city. I could imagine they, they almost take a slow incline uh, progression for Fujino to really cement herself at city. So next year, I think she could really win this award, but um, I want to keep an eye on her honorable mention for Fujino, but city's just a little too stacked that they're not going to rely on on a young forward to be as big of an influence as someone who wins a best young player award needs to be in this league. 